In 2015, there was unprecedented excitement in the space community. This was because, up until that time, the best image we had of the Pluto system was a blurry representation, lacking any discernible details. While the Hubble Space Telescope had attempted to observe Pluto, its small size and immense distance from Earth meant that the best it could capture was a rough outline with some color variation. However, in 2015, everything changed. This was the year when the New Horizons space probe reached Pluto after an incredible nine-year journey through the solar system. The probe provided humanity with the most detailed and breathtaking images of Pluto and its moons ever seen. This landmark event raised many questions. What exactly did New Horizons see and discover during its historic flyby of the Pluto system? What insights did it provide into this mysterious dwarf planet? And finally, what has the probe been doing since the completion of its flyby? I'm Alex McColgan, and you're watching our channel Insane of Curiosity. In this video, I'll take you through the incredible journey and findings of the New Horizons mission, exploring the highlights of its achievements and the astounding revelations it brought to light about Pluto and beyond. Let's start by setting the stage. For those who might be new to the subject of Pluto or for anyone who hasn't thought much about it in recent years, here's a brief overview. Pluto is a tiny, distant world, so small that it is dwarfed even by our moon. Despite its small size, it has captured the imagination of scientists and space enthusiasts alike. Located in the Kuiper Belt, a vast region of icy, comet-like objects beyond Neptune, Pluto was the last of the traditional nine planets to be explored. This delay was partly due to its extraordinary distance from Earth, but also because, astonishingly, it was once thought to be an uninteresting celestial body. Thankfully, the dedicated scientists and engineers behind New Horizons championed the importance of this mission, emphasizing the potential for groundbreaking discoveries. Their efforts paid off when, in 2006, New Horizons was launched as part of NASA's New Frontiers program, which focuses on medium-budget space missions with ambitious goals. The spacecraft's primary objective was simple yet profound reach Pluto as quickly as possible. To achieve this, New Horizons was designed as a lightweight probe and launched on the most powerful rocket available at the time, a fully boosted Atlas V. This setup ensured that it became the fastest spacecraft ever launched. Remarkably, it zipped past the moon just nine hours after its launch, a journey that took the Apollo missions nearly four days to complete. On its way to Pluto, New Horizons used Jupiter's massive gravitational field to slingshot itself further into the solar system, a maneuver that shaved three years off its journey time. During this flyby, it also tested its systems by capturing stunning images and videos of Jupiter and its moons, demonstrating the probe's capabilities. Following this successful trial, the spacecraft entered hibernation mode for most of its voyage to preserve its instruments and reduce wear and tear. As it approached Pluto in early 2015, the mission team reawakened New Horizons, and from then on, it began transmitting images of the Pluto system every day. These images offered tantalizing hints of what was to come, revealing striking differences between Pluto and its largest moon, Charon. The anticipation reached its peak on July 14, 2015, when New Horizons made its closest approach to Pluto, coming within just 12,500 kilometers, 7,800 miles, of its surface. However, the excitement was accompanied by a degree of patience, as mission controllers had to wait for the data to be transmitted back to Earth. The probe was too busy capturing high-resolution images and measurements during the flyby to send any data immediately. When the data transfer began, it was limited by a slow uplink speed of just 1 kilobit per second and a latency of 4.5 hours due to the vast distance. But when the images and data finally arrived, they were nothing short of spectacular. Pluto revealed itself to be a dynamic, geologically active world with a diverse landscape that included mountain ranges made of water ice, vast ice plains, and even evidence of cryovolcanism. Its most iconic feature, the heart-shaped region now known as Sputnik Planitia stunned scientists and the public alike. This vast nitrogen ice plain, roughly the size of Texas, displayed striking polygonal patterns that suggested active convection driven by the sublimation and freezing of nitrogen ice. 
Surrounding this plain were towering mountains composed of rigid water ice, some of which may even be cryovolcanoes, such as the massive Wright Mons, which rises 4 kilometers, 2.5 miles, above the surface. Beyond its surface features, Pluto's atmosphere was another area of fascination. New Horizons revealed that Pluto's thin atmosphere, primarily composed of nitrogen, is in a constant state of flux, sublimating and refreezing as the dwarf planet orbits the Sun over its 248-year-long year. This seasonal cycle dramatically affects Pluto's surface and appearance, making it one of the most dynamic bodies in the outer solar system. Equally intriguing were the discoveries about Pluto's moons. Charon, its largest moon, is tidally locked with Pluto, resulting in an unusual orbital relationship where the two bodies always show the same face to each other. This gravitational dance has also led to fascinating phenomena, such as the reddish material observed on Charon's poles, believed to be tholins, complex organic compounds that originated on Pluto and were transported to Charon. The New Horizons mission didn't end with Pluto. After its historic flyby, the spacecraft continued its journey deeper into the Kuiper Belt, conducting a flyby of the distant object Arakoth in 2019. This extended mission has provided valuable insights into the ancient building blocks of the solar system, demonstrating the continued utility of this pioneering spacecraft. Pluto has an atmosphere. And not only that, but the images are incredible. Due to Pluto's small size and weak gravity, the atmosphere appears to extend high above the surface of Pluto. Earth's atmosphere, while being much more massive and dense compared to Pluto, hugs the planet comparatively tightly as the gravity is a lot stronger. The atmospheric pressure on Pluto, on the other hand, is exceptionally low, roughly 10 microbars, or 100,000 to 1 million times weaker than the surface pressure on Earth. It is theorized that the pressure could increase to as much as 18 to 280 millibars, three times the surface pressure on Mars and a quarter of the surface pressure on Earth. This may happen throughout Pluto's year when at some points in its orbit, it is closer to the Sun than Neptune. This would make the temperature rise, causing the surface ices to sublimate into gases, a process for which there is evidence in the ice plains. But the last time Pluto was thought to have an atmospheric density similar to Mars was 900,000 years ago. At this pressure and temperature, the conditions could even be right for liquid nitrogen to form on Pluto's surface. Some evidence of this might be found here, in what appears to be a frozen over lake. At any rate, within just one year, Pluto's atmospheric density can vary by a factor of four due to seasonal variations. That is a massive contrast compared to other solar system objects with atmospheres, which generally stay pretty consistent. The atmosphere consists of the same ices found condensed on the surface, namely nitrogen, methane, and carbon monoxide. The other fascinating discovery New Horizons made about the atmosphere is that it has up to 20 haze layers. Haze layers themselves were not unexpected, but the amount of them was. They can clearly be seen in some of these images, acting like layers of a thin kind of fog. Sunlight can be seen streaming through one such layer in this photo, the shadows from the mountains clearly seen in contrast to the sunlight shining through the haze. The layers do not appear to be level across the planet. Here you can see this haze layer high above the surface, but on this side of the image, it touches the surface. On a side note, to us at Insane of Curiosity, these are the most breathtaking photos of Pluto, and they were purposefully saved until last. You can truly appreciate the depth and the scale of the mountain ranges. Pluto almost seems like a toy replica due to the extreme topographical relief, but these mountains appear so high because Pluto is so small and its gravity is not strong enough to pull them down. In June 2020, scientists released a paper stating that under Pluto's surface is believed to be an ocean of liquid water, very much like the icy moons of the gas planets. It was originally thought that Pluto formed cold, being so far away from the sun. However, evidence from New Horizons suggests that this is not the case, but rather it started off hot. This means it's always had an ocean, and if that is true, then there is a case that habitability on Pluto may be just as good as habitability on the closer, icy moons. If Pluto is the standard for dwarf planets found in the Kuiper Belt generally, there may be many more habitable worlds out there. How do we know it had a hot start? There is evidence of expansion, not contraction on its surface. 
These cracks show that the crust is moving apart, not folding over itself. If this is true and Pluto had a hot start, perhaps with bombardments from other planetesimals heating it up during the early stages of the solar system, it could be that shortly after it was formed, it would have had enough thermal energy that it was once an ocean world. This really puts a new perspective on how the solar system formed. While the total absence of craters is limited to Sputnik Planitia, it is amazing how few craters there are on Pluto and Charon generally. This might not just be because their surfaces are young, but perhaps the Kuiper Belt is more devoid of smaller objects than we may have first thought. For more, stay tuned with Insane of Curiosity, where we explore the wonders of our universe.